If you want to change your stereotypical impression of the Irish and of Dublin, then maybe don't read this book. Welcome everyone to another round of the Mere Mortals book reviews. My name is Kyron and I do these book reviews for those who want to transcend beyond their own mere mortality, to dive deeper into the books and extract the juicy, tasty information that is contained within, or if you're simply too lazy, this is also a great place to come. Today, we do have a book indeed about the Irish and about Dublin, and funnily enough, it's called Dubliners by James Joyce, or Dubliners, I'm not exactly sure how you say that. This book was published in 1914 and it's about 200 pages, just a bit over 200 pages, so not a super big one. It's a description of the Irish middle class life, I would say, in general, um, and it's told through a variety of, of stories. And so there is a variety of ages, of lives, of settings and situations. We get small snippets of each of these and it's uh, a non it's a fictional work but it's told in a sort of non-fictional way there is no real fictional magical elements or anything like that so what can you expect to find within well you'll have stories about boys playing hooky you'll have drunken escapades religious conversions right you know friendly parties amongst friends domestic life and even a bit of domestic violence forbidden love depressed daily routines and i would just say you know, some general friendships as well. What it is like to be an Irish man or Irish woman or Irish kid living in Dublin. And it all is centered in the city of Dublin as well. Now, this book and the author is a very well-known Irish novelist, James Joyce. I've actually done a book review. One of my very first book reviews actually was on The Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. So it's not unknown to this channel. Uh, and uh, he wrote mostly about Dublin itself, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, this in particular contains 15 stories. So the stories are things such an, entitled as The Sisters, An Encounter, uh, Araby, Eveline, After the Race, Two Gallants, The Boarding House, A Little Cloud, Counterparts, Clay, A Painful Case, Ivy Day in the Committee Room, A Mother, Grace, and the dead. Ooh. So there's quite a few stories contained within here and each of them is roughly, I would say 10 to 15 pages in length. And then you have a couple of long ones at the end, um, being grace and the dead, which are closer to 40 ish, 50 ish pages, something like that. Now I'm going to jump onto my first and really only theme for today, which is the Irish stereotype does anything set it apart. And what is the common theme I guess you can find running throughout all of these stories? Obviously Dublin, so that's the setting, the location. But is there is there a theme that came without? And honestly, like the one thing that sort of jumped out at me was there seemed to be alcohol involved in every story. Even if it involved little kids, there would at least be a, a passing mention of alcohol or something like that. Uh, and in particular, I guess you could see that overconsumption pay, played a fair bit in it and there was a couple of stories of guys who would overconsume alcohol. There was a, the one where it was a, a worker who even during his work had to nip out to the pub. He ends up maybe getting fired and then goes on a, on a bender with some friends and ends up with no money, ends up beating his kid in the, in the evening. Um, but quite a few of them, there would be a overly drunk person coming into the party, for example, or there would be a casual mention to how their uncle or something couldn't handle the drink or something like that. So it seemed to be, I don't know, it just seemed to pop up in almost every story. There was this, um, you know, casual mention at the very least of, of alcohol continually running throughout. Now, this I don't think is totally indicative of the Irish experience. You know, it's it's not fun to to just totally put that on. But you have to say as well, like, okay, this is this is popping up more than you would expect. Like if you were going to talk about an average you know 15 stories of Australian life in Brisbane I'm not sure overconsumption of alcohol would would pop up as frequently now I wanted to read out a, a Joyce James Joyce quote um, actually because I, I think that sort of gets to the heart a little bit about the the Irish stereotype and of Dublin as well so he says um, for myself I always write about Dublin because if I can get to the heart of Dublin I can get to the heart of all the cities of the world in, partic in the particular is contained the universal. So he was sort of saying one of the things with his works is 
when I can focus on an individual city and in particular Dublin, because he knows it so well, that's where he grew up most of his life, you can sort of see the human experience. And so that actually got me thinking a little bit, okay, like is the human experience, you know, connected so much with, <laughs> with alcohol? Is this such a huge part? And you probably could say it is a fair part. And, you know, there's a strong drinking culture definitely here in, a, in Australia and in particular um, an over consumption going on a bender. There's so many words that you can use for, for drinking so much and, and uh, alcohol, alcoholic consumption. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing with these stories is you, you can sort of see your own city in that. You can look at it and be like, oh, yeah, there's, I, I, I know some people like this or who would behave like this and, and, uh, and things like that. So um, there was hints of other parts as well of the Irish experience that really make it unique as well, I guess. So some of it is would be the religious importance. Um, it didn't really dive too much into the the Catholics versus Protestants, um, for example, but that is a huge part of Irish culture. Uh, the family structure and domestic routines, it was it seemed you'd have a very close knit family, but then it would sort of loosen a little bit as you started getting to the cousins and whatnot. At least that's from my impression. Uh, and the weather and, and even intersex relations, you can get hints of what it is like to be in Dublin, but I wouldn't say it's sort of like a stereotype or what really runs throughout. The one thing I really did get from this book was, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of drinking or alcohol plays a big part of, of Irish life, for example. So some of my own observations and takeaways, um, one of the things whilst going through Wikipedia and just trying to learn more a bit about this book as well was uh, some people were talking about the themes of paralysis, so in particular of Irish nationalism, which was growing at the time when this book was written in 1914, so over 100 years ago. Uh, he believed it was causing stagnation. And so many parts of the book seem to indicate paralysis. Uh, if you look at the first story, for example, which is about a, a priest who is dying and he was basically paralyzed and this young boy through the eyes of, of, of a young boy was sort of seeing this and, and being like sort of shocked at, at the deterioration of this man who he respects and loves. And um, there's also like epiphanies as well. So uh, there was there were some people saying, oh yeah, each of these characters has somewhat of an uh, epiphany during their story that the, and a realization, which is somewhat true, but it, it didn't certainly didn't strike me as being like, oh wow, each of these characters is is having an epiphany. What does that represent, or things like that? So, me personally, I didn't I didn't see those those themes or those those styles really jumping in. Uh, one thing I really did like was the final story, which was called The Dead. Uh, and I, I thought this was really great for the main character's introspection. He seemed to be a, a really well put together character, you know, a man. He had a, a loving wife. He was you know, successful by all means. He had good priorities. You know, he took care of his aunts and, and things like that. Uh, but you could see he would overanalyze small details in a in a party setting someone makes an offhand comment and he drills down on this and then thinks about it and you can see his mind ticking over trying to interpret what what's going on what do they mean by this things like that um and i i think i sort of resonated with that because that's something i tend to do as well if uh, I'll, I'll pick on like a certain thing and i'll, I'll overthink it um so I, I i i quite enjoyed that final story and wish it had actually been a little bit longer the other one was um, nothing here is really added to my impression of of Ireland as a whole. The now this is like you mentioned a story about a city, Dubliners, uh, and like he also mentioned, if you can get into the heart of the the uh, the of Dublin, you can sort of get into the heart of the universal. The heart of the particular gives you what is the universal, and I you know. It's, it sort of makes sense to me that nothing really jumped out at me about Ireland because he's talking about a city and, and cities are the same basically everywhere in the world. Yes, some minor differences, but by and large, a city life is city life. You get up, you go to work, you see your family and, and it doesn't have any of the excitement of, you know, what is unique to to the Irish and to Dublin. It didn't, it didn't really strike me as a, a book which or, or or something that made me go, mm, I really need to see the dub go see Dublin. This is something 
unique about it. This is something, the only thing maybe would be the pubs, <laughs> which, which was uh, the stereotype I mentioned, pervasive alcohol. And so, yeah, maybe the pubs there would be something a little bit different. So um, that's just because of the way the this, this small stories are written. Maybe if it was one main character going out and uh, similar to his more famous work, Ulysses, which is, I believe, focused on just one character and his, his travels throughout Dublin, which I believe actually a few of the characters in this book make a brief appearances. So um, that is definitely on my to read list at some point. Uh, but yeah, in, in summary, I'm going to say I found this a rather bland overall. Nothing really jumped out at me whilst reading this. I was like, oh, this is okay, but you know, it's, it's just a story. There's nothing really uh, intriguing about it that drew me in. Uh, nothing that excited me. That's probably the best way to put it. Uh, it could have been 15 stories from around the world. And honestly, it wouldn't have made that much a difference to me. You, you could have inserted um, English names instead of Irish names. And I would have been really none the wiser. You could have said, change the name to Londoners. And I probably would have been none the wiser. So um, yeah, there was nothing really amazing, I guess, that that came out. And it just seemed to scream to me that life is the same everywhere. It's it's kind of boring and bland when you when you're living in the city and when you you're doing like you know taking snapshots of a daily person's life. It's really not that interesting. It's it's, it's just life, uh, and you don't need to know about that. Life is sometimes uh, well, I suppose a lot of times about those unique experiences, those one-off individual wow moments, and none of that was really shown. Um, in this book. So overall, I'm going to give it a four out of 10 Dubliners by James Joyce. Okay. If you want to learn about Dublin, if you want to see maybe what life was a little bit closer to a uh, hundred years ago, but I won't be really recommending this to anyone saying you have to read this book. It, it was just okay. And so that is it for today, my mere mortalites. Thank you for joining me to this part of the video. What are your thoughts on Dublin? Have you read any of other James Joyce's works? Are the Irish uncontrollable drunkards? I would love to know all of these things. Uh, if you could just leave me a comment down below, I always read them and uh, respond to them. You know, all the nice things like share, comment, subscribe, bell, blah, blah, blah. That, that's uh, all, all fantastic. And just a reminder here that these uh, episodes we also put out in audio format. So if you don't particularly care about the video um, and you want it a little bit more accessible, you can find Mere Mortals book reviews on any of the podcasting platforms and whatnot. So that is it for today, my friends. I hope you have a fantastic drink wherever you are in the world. Chiron out.